like I said, this is what creativity is. To make huge mistakes and have fun doing it. I have logged in on my personal Facebook page instead of Choco Paint, and that's where I've been explaining all these steps all along and couldn't understand why there's nobody there watching. <laughs> Welcome to our Thursday live demo. And it's the 1st of October. It is spring. We can feel the summer in the air. I hope you all are fabulous. And today we're doing step two of revamping a space. Now last week, we built a mood board together and I'm going to take you through the steps and the mood board that we've built so that you know exactly what my plans are. But remember, this is just a planning process. Nothing is cast in stone. And as this process and this project um, evolves, we will maybe tweak some of the ideas and make sure it's beautiful once we are done. Okay, so let's go through all the ideas I've pinned on this board. So we, at the end, when everything is painted, we will try to incorporate some natural elements, maybe weaker light fittings, we'll see. I love natural elements and I love pattern. So on this picture, you can see the pattern on the wall tiles. I'm not going to add or put wall tiles in my kitchen, but instead we are going to do vinyl tiles. And that's what I have over here. So this is the design. I have in mind, and this is the tiles that we will be sticking onto our walls. This is a lovely creative idea for my pantry door, and this is something I would definitely use at a later stage. And then let's move to the colours. The colours that we've selected for the kitchen is Davet, which is an antique white, Vigna Stone, which is a warm grey, and it complements most color tones. So you are safe to incorporate wicker with it, browns with it, a lovely color to use, very safe gray to use. And then Comfort's Blue, which is a very dark duck egg color. And that will go with my open plan scheme because we live in a home where we've got an open plan um, layout. So the colors need to flow into each other and this scheme will work, the color scheme will work perfectly. Something that I want to incorporate is maybe some check fabrics in, on our kitchen towels. So this is the plan. Once again, it's not something that's final. And we can change as we go. Okay. Now first, very important step, when you paint your kitchen, is to remove all the hardware. So I have invested in a lovely tool earlier today as I couldn't find Yaku screwdrivers. And this is a tool with multiple points, so I can, I can, I am self-empowered to remove all the hardware. So I have loosened it in my pre previous life that I've done where there was no one. Um, so just unscrew all the screws with your tool. Okay, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Make sure it's loose, remove. The reason for this is, and safely put all your screws together in a safe, secure place if you want to replace them at a later stage. Now with chalk ore, the great advantage is you don't need to sand, you don't need to prime, but you do need to clean your surfaces properly using lacquer thinners. My walls are painted with a PVA and I won't need, it won't be necessary to prepare my wall surfaces. But the melamine kitchen cupboard doors, I will have to clean well with lacquer thinners. So important, wear a glove, wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask now, else you will, um, won't be able to hear me. I take a cloth, and you actually wash the melamine surface down with a lack of thinner. So a generous amount of thinners. And in some instances, you will have to repeat this step more than once, seeing that there are cleaning agents built up on the surface. It's a kitchen. 
there is um, steam, water, mold buildup that you won't be able to see with the eye, but it is here in most instances. So you need to wash your cupboards down with a lacquer thinness. It's not just a wipe, it's a proper clean. And this is key to success for anything else that is going to happen on the surface. So you don't need to sand, no priming, but the cleaning, you can see my cloth is wet and I thoroughly wash these surfaces off with a lack of thinness. Okay, so don't use benzene, no turpentine. I prefer to use power fixes lack of thinness. That's what we do. We paint on a daily basis, upcycle furniture for clients, room makeovers, kitchen makeovers, and this is how we prepare the surfaces. And this is for melamine. We will at a later stage discuss enamel, wall, wall surfaces, where there's PVA on your wall, no preparation is required. Now, okay, let's just look at the thinners again. So it's power fix, lack of thinners. And honestly, this is key to success. Okay, clean well. Then the next very important step is to allow for your thinners to dry properly. It will evaporate. Depending on the weather, it can take 20 to 40 minutes. We have a cloudy day in Gauteng today, so I'll allow the surface to dry for at least 40 minutes to make sure it's completely dry before I start painting onto it. I have already, earlier today, cleaned these drawers. And seeing now that, so you can see I've wiped them down, the thinness does not get rid of the shininess. You can see the melamine on, my, on some of the areas in my kitchen are really shiny. But it edges the surface so that the paint can actually grip. Okay, so we are all back to a more normal. Um, we are back to work. But we, I specifically, didn't have time during the lockdown period to revamp my kitchen. Actually, I didn't have the permission. Okay, but permission was granted. So I can start with this process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean section for section as I have time to repaint it or to paint it. You will see next week how this entire process evolves. Okay, even though we are back at work and we are busy. Okay, so nothing is impossible even though we have a more busy life. Next, while my thinners are going to evaporate, I'm going to show you how to paint on walls. And something that's so amazing about chocolate paint is that we have charcoal colours for walls. So the lovely charcoal colour palette, most of those colours are available in wall paint. Very important with paint is to shake before you open. Just make sure you secure, securely hold the lid because the paint needs a shake or a mix or you will stir it once you open it. Okay, next very important step, something I have done already just to save time, is to mask off the areas where you don't want the paint to, to reach. So I have masked off the counter, masked off around the light switch, um, around the door. So all these areas I have masked off so that I know my paintwork is done properly and neatly. Ah, something I want to show you. Look at our beautiful charcoal brushes. So we have charcoal brushes available. I'm using the Enzyme charcoal brush for my cut lines. It creates a very smooth, even finish. Also beautiful for painting furniture. I just love it. Um, once you paint with it, you, you won't want to paint with anything else. A charcoal fiber brush could also have worked for cut lines. Here's the fiber brush. And this is what the bristles look like. Okay, natural bristles, where these are synthetic bristles. Both works well for cut lines. The synthetic bristles, beautiful for painting furniture to get a very even smooth finish. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to paint my cut lines. So everywhere where you know the roller can't reach and the color I'm using is divert. So this is the first step when painting onto wall surfaces. So nice even coat. This is your first coat. We will always recommend to paint set two coats on wall surfaces. This is a cut line. It's like colouring in a picture. So you first outline and then we are going to roll in between the lines. Ladies and gents, this is the best form of, the of therapy. So if you had a hard day at the office, just go home and paint a wall. Okay, it's, it's better than cooking supper because you spend hours preparing a meal and then everybody eats it up in five minutes and forgetting to say thank you. Here you can appreciate what you have created for years to come. I just love Davit. It creates a very lively, vibrant feel in a space. Okay, so my first, I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to get on the step ladder now, just to make it easier to film. Okay, now my cut lines are done. So you will finish all your cut lines. By the time you are done with your cut lines, the cut lines will be dry, and that's when you start rolling your paint with a paint roller onto your walls. So the roller that I like to use, which is sufficient for very smooth surfaces or more unsmooth surfaces, is a classic roller. This is a Hamilton's Classic Roller, 225 millimeter. And I'm going to distribute some of my paint in my paint tray. I'm going to work on the floor for this, so forgive me. This is part of the fun. So just pour out. Let's turn it around so that I don't miss my beautiful label in the front. Okay, and there's my paint in my paint tray. I'm going to roll with my roller through the paint to make sure I evenly dis distribute the paint everywhere. You can, before you start working with a roller, wash it out to get rid of all the fluff in the roller. But then very important is to dry it properly before you start painting with it. Else it will make watermarks as you start painting. So that you do beforehand. It's part of the preparation process. My kitchen, the problems in my space, is I have very little natural light. And that's the main reason why I want to incorporate more lighter colours, especially on the top section of my kitchen and also on the wall areas, to create a more lightly, lively feel in my kitchen. Okay, now we are going to roll. And in between my cut lines, with my classic roller, I roll. So nicely, evenly. Okay. And that's how cut lines are done and how a wall is painted. Very important. Very important. I will wait for my first coat to be dry, to be completely dry. This will take, this is a low sheen, it's a wall paint, so it takes longer than chocolate, chocolate paints to dry. So allow for an hour to dry 
and then I will start applying my second coat and I will repeat the steps exactly as I have done here. First cut lines again and then row in between the cut lines. Okay, next we are going, it's too late for Yaku now to change his mind because we are going to start painting the drawer in Comfort's Blue. So for the drawer I am going to use a foam roller a foam roller and I'm going to use chalk or paint. So previously we've used chalk or colours for walls which is a low sheen paint for wall surfaces. Now I'm going to use chalk or paint. Now what makes chalk or paint different is that it can grip to most surfaces without a primer, without having to sand. Sorry for those of you who already know it. Um, shake the bottle, it's the first instruction on the lid. So I give a good shake. The colour I'm going to work with is Comfort's Blue. So I unscrew the lid. I'm going to pour some of this paint in a paint dryer. I'm just making more space for myself. Masking tape was used. My screwdriver. Paint tray. So why do I distribute paint into a paint tray? There's a few reasons for that. There are a few things that contaminate paint. Air, water and dirty equipment. So if you work from this all the time, air contamination can occur. So I rather want to pour some paint out into a paint tray. Let me just take this one away, it's unnecessary. And Put the lid back on. So that air co contamination cannot occur. And I pour out as I need. Also we do recommend to put your um, piece of wax paper or glad wrap or something back on just to make the opening process easier when you reuse your chocolate. Now I'm going to use 110 millimeter foam roller okay and I'm going to share some tips when working with a foam roller so I distribute the paint evenly and generously on my foam roller if you work with too little paint on the foam roller those are the times where you will see lines occur also remember you won't only be painting one coat we will be painting our first coat, allow that to dry, then our second coat. So I have cleaned this drawer earlier today. I have given it enough time to dry, enough time for the thinness to evaporate, and now I'm going to start to paint. With my foam roller, you can, there is a possibility to remove this from the drawer. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make sure I paint nicely, evenly, mask off the sections where I don't want paint to reach. And now I'm going to start with a foam roller. So what I do is I start more or less in the center of my big surface to make sure that I evenly distribute the paint. As you can see, air bubbles appear on the surface and that's quite normal. It's air that is being transmitted from the foam roller onto your surface. And I roll evenly, smoothly. If I feel my roller is too dry, I wet it more. But I don't overwork my surface with a foam roller. If you roll too many times with your foam roller, on the same surface, that's when you will get a very rough feel. Yaku, ons kom bijs word gevaarf. I've been waiting three years for this moment to happen and you are part of this transformation process. Okay, so evenly, nicely, you cannot work with a foam roller if you had a bad day. At the office because that's when you apply too much pressure and that's when roughness on the surface will occur so if you had a bad day at the office you paint walls if you had a good day at the office 
you paint with a foam roller and you paint your kitchen cu cupboards. Okay, so nicely even tips when working with a foam roller. Work in a space where there is no moving air, no wind. So don't open windows when you're working with this where there's a breeze. Because what a breeze will do, it will pop the air bubbles that we will see on the that we see on the surface, and it will um, it will allow the paint to dry unnaturally. Also, don't paint with a fan uh, while you're busy rolling with a foam roller. As we're busy painting, you will see how the air bubbles disappear. So, if you see the air bubbles, just know it's a natural process. And it's perfect. Okay, so I did not sleep last night because I had a look at our Choco Champs entries, all 750 of them. I read every story. I cried in bed for some of your stories that you've shared with us. And the entries this year is beyond comparison. I want to thank every person that did the trouble to get a jar of choco paint. No matter how big or how small that entry was, it was so inspirational to read all your stories, all your ideas, see what you have created. Um, it's a very hard decision that we need to make, but I want to assure you that every person that entered is a winner. Okay, thank you for the amazing entries. Back to a foam roller, if you can change direction. Okay, so if you have an area that you want to fix, just change direction and I'm going to allow my first coat to dry. As you can see, I didn't apply too much pressure. I evenly distributed the paint everywhere evenly and this is my first coat. I'm happy. I'm going to allow this to dry and then I'm going to start applying my second coat. A tip, if you have painted your first coat and the kids did fight and you felt very aggressive and you did roll too hard and roughness did occur, there are always ways of fixing everything and remember that. Then you will take a scotch pad, those green pads that we all use in our kitchens. Once the paint is dry, to remove that roughness before you start applying your second coat. And you will even that out with your scotch pad. And then apply your, your second coat. So make sure the first coat is a good foundation for anything that happens on top. This is me for today. Okay, this is the end of today's session. So it was very back to basics. Next week, I'm going to show you how we paint more areas. I'm going to share creative ideas with a scullery. So there's some work that needs to happen there. And I'm also going to share with you how to apply the glaze. So I'm going to allow my coat to dry. I'm going to apply my second coat. I'm going to wait overnight before I apply the glaze. But next week, I will show you the glaze application and you will see how I have progressed with my kitchen makeover. It was lovely having you here. I apologize for being late. It's no one else's fault other than mine. Um, I'm usually just the person that answers questions on Facebook. I don't know how to log in on our own, on our own business Facebook page. Um, but this is what creativity is all about, to inspire to make mistakes, to make improvements, and to have fun. And until next week, have fun with Choco Paint.